Hi, everybody. It's Patrick McCarthy reporting with Tri-Cities Community Television. We're here in our Westwood studios at the Fountainhead in Port Coquitlam. Uh, today we have Councillor Craig Hodge with us with a councillor update. Uh, uh, councillor Hodge is a uh, councillor for Coquitlam. So welcome to the studios, um, uh, Councillor Hodge. And so I, I guess for us is, is a chance to just get an update. I mean, it's been a, you know, we're just coming out of COVID. I just want to see, you know, get people a chance of what's happening at Coquitlam right now. So there's a lot happening in Coquitlam. Uh, we uh, we did a good job. I think our staff and and the community rallying around together uh, during COVID, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, to moving back as best as we can to the way things were. Uh, we're excited that we're going to have the opportunity to gather again uh, for Canada Day. So get people out in the community seeing each other again. So that'll be sort of our next big event. But uh, our rec centers are open and we're up and running, and uh, I think people are very appreciative of the time. Uh, of the ability to get back together again. So one of the things that, yeah, I find the same thing like with COVID is just uh, Canada Day. Uh, I live in Poco, but I know that I had the pleasure of sort of t trying out Coquitlam's Canada Day a few years ago. And uh, I think it's almost like a treat to try Canada Day in Coquitlam and, and then sort of do the fireworks in Port Coquitlam. So yeah. you do a great job there, you guys. Yeah, and, and I think all of our communities do a great job. I know uh, Port Coquitlam just celebrated May Day. Uh, my scout troop was down there participating. And it, so it was just great to see people together. Uh, we're looking forward to the car show. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get that together again. So so everybody is uh, really gathering day together. And, uh, and it's, it's nice to see that again. So one of the things that uh, you're on a safety committee, and I, I guess, uh, how is that going? So I'm on a, I'm on a couple of uh, committees. Uh, I, I serve on the Union of British Columbia Municipalities as, as a rep there. And, and through that, I, I serve on a number of uh, pr province-wide safety committees. I'm on the, uh, uh, the UBCM uh, Community Safety Committee, and I uh, co-chair the uh, Contract Management Committee for RCMP, the RCMP contract for, for British Columbia. So uh, we're an advisory group that represents uh, municipalities that have an RCMP contract. And of course, that's been big news recently because the RCMP as a, uh, as a body, uh, members have uh, recently formed a union, negotiated their first contract. And so uh, that has impact uh, to, uh, to our communities as we uh, go through uh, the next uh, stage of how that's going to look. And, uh, you know, and there'll be other things coming uh, as well as we, we look at the implementation of things like body worn cameras and, and stuff. And uh, I've also just been recently uh, named co-chair of the local government roundtable uh, committee reviewing the Police Act reform. And of course, there was an all party committee set up uh, about a year and a half ago uh, that uh, committee has reported back to uh, to the province with 11 recommendations about how we can reform the police act and so uh, I, I serve on a committee that's going to uh, have input from local government and uh, policing in British Columbia uh, majority of it is done by municipalities whether it's a city police force or an RCMP police force so so municipalities have a really big role in the delivery of, uh, of protective services but also you hit a nail on the head when it comes to, you know, one thing I didn't know is like, you know, RCMP costs are, are attributed to or passed down to the city. So really what you're in indicating is that with a union and sort of that there's a cost impact potentially for cities. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the RCMP were, were without a contract for five years. So uh, last year they uh, negotiated their first contract, which included five years of retro pay. So altogether, that contract is going to represent a 24% increase in policing costs. Uh, some of it we were preparing for and communities were putting money aside, but there's going to be a, a, a big bill to, to pay for the retroactivity in that and also uh, moving forward. And, you know, policing costs in British Columbia represent for most communities in the area of about 40% of their overall budget. So these have big budget implications. Policing is a very expensive service, but a very important service service and uh, and you know I think that we're very pleased that uh, the RCMP members uh, are getting a raise it's a tough job that they do uh, but now our challenge is going to be finding ways that uh, work within municipal budgets how we're going to pay for that service but more importantly how we can be more effective in the way we use our RCMP officers so they're highly trained I think well respected uh, I think everybody in the community appreciates the job that they do but we have to figure out ways that we can better utilize that resource 
and such things as is it appropriate to have RCMP officers or any police department for that matter responding to mental health calls? Is it appropriate to have them tied up for eight hours at a hospital trying to admit, uh, admit a patient? Um, and are there other options to use auxiliary police officers or uh, set up community safety officers? So we're looking for ways that we can deliver a good service, keep our citizens safe, make them feel safe, and also, uh, you know, try to retain, you know, contain the costs that go along with that. But so, so just a couple of, you know, sort of questions around, you know, just in a sense, a lot of folks have RCMP in their city. They they see as a, they see it as a federal police force. But just just to help people provide an understanding of the challenge in the city is that, you know, really our, the RCMP is not managed by the city of Coquitlam. So you can only offer, I guess, advice or input. You you really the costs is, are tough to control because it comes from one side of the ledger. Yeah, and, and you make a good point. Uh, the RCMP officers themselves are, are employed by a federal agency, and the contract was negotiated between the Treasury Board of Canada and the union that's representing the officers. And then they look down the line and sort of say, oh, well, you've got 244 officers in Coquitlam. This is your bill for the service that we're going to provide. And by the way, you're also going to, down the road, have to pay for a new radio system, uh, but, you know, improved weaponry, uh, body-worn cameras. And so these costs get passed down to us. And so in my role is to make sure that I'm there to represent the municipalities to make sure that we're getting the service that we're paying for and also making sure that somebody is saying, hey, wait a minute, there's going to be a cost to this. And how are we going to be able to uh, contain that cost? And also, too, like we're in the Tri-Cities. So when you got Port Coquitlam has, you know, they pay for police force. You guys, Coquitlam plays for police force. Port Moody has its own, its own police uh, force. So realistically, how does that work? Like, I mean... Well, I, I think Coquitlam and Port Coquitlam share a detachment. So we have a, a funding arrangement and, uh, and a superintendent who, uh, who runs the detachment, and he's responsible for the day-to-day -day operations. And uh, he regularly reports out to us, uh, you know, usually monthly or every couple of months. And, uh, well, in fact, uh, we have a regular trimester report, so that comes every four months, where he gives us the stats on, you know, what criminal activity we're seeing, uh, areas that need to be improvement, uh, need improvement. And so we're actually, the two uh, cities, work together there's actually we actually now have a joint uh, task force that I sit on uh, mayor West uh, uh, councillor Pollock is is on that uh, on that committee as well uh, mayor Stewart uh, myself uh, councillor councillor Asmundson so we we've got a, a, a group that work together and uh, sorry and uh, and uh, councillor Darling from Port Coquitlam so we work together to sort of see what are the interests of both communities and how do we manage a joint detachment because ultimately our primary goal is to make sure that our citizens are safe and, and that they feel safe in our community. Yeah. So, so just, I mean, I'm just trying to get around this point of, uh, I know in Port Coquitlam, it feels sometimes we've got a lot more, we've had some shootings, we've had some uh, higher violent crimes. How is the crime rate in Coquitlam relative to, to you know, say four, four or five years ago? Is it is stable? Yeah, it's stable. I mean, statistically, we are one of the safest communities in, in British Columbia. Uh, but, you know, with growth uh, comes more uh, criminal activity. So I think proportionately we're, we're holding our own, but we are certainly seeing uh, some more uh, gang activity, which is disturbing. Uh, it tends to spike. I mean, I was in the news industry a few years ago and there's some very high profile uh, shootings. So these are the things that the police have to be aware of. Uh, we're also worried about some of the uh, exploitation stuff that's going on. Uh, we, we hear constantly from residents that want uh, more uh, traffic enforcement. And, uh, and people want to see their police more visible because that gives you a sense of safety and, uh, and security. So, uh, you know, those are, those are the things that we focus on. The uh, RCMP detachment here in Coquitlam is currently working on a strategic plan, and that will sort of help to sort of guide us as to where they see things going in a growing community. I, I'm very pleased when I look at uh, the, when, when SkyTrain came to Coquitlam. There were a lot of fears that, oh, crime is going to spike. You know, it was nicknamed uh, Crime Train. 
And, and that didn't happen. We didn't see a, a spike in criminal activity because we were prepared for the opening of SkyTrain. We already had something called U-Crew or the Uniform Crime Reduction Unit in place. So we had already hired eight officers that were going to patrol the streets and do more foot patrols. And so the day that SkyTrain opened, they were basically there on the platform to greet them. And so I think we've been doing uh, really good work on, on preventative uh, measures. But uh, one of the things that I'm hoping that we can see is to reinstitute the auxiliary program. And this was a program that was discontinued by Ottawa uh, out of concerns for safety and some very high profile events that took place uh, back east. And so uh, they're now looking at a review of what the auxiliary program will look like. But the auxiliaries play an important role in policing and community policing, and we want to find a way of uh, engaging those volunteers again in community policing and for and for supporting our frontline uh, paid officers. Yeah. So is there is there opportunities now in in, uh, your, in Coquitlam to be a volunteer, you know, community police officer? There, there are many ways to volunteer in our community, uh, whether it's with uh, Speed Watch, whether it's in our uh, community police stations. But currently, right now, there isn't the ability to operate with police, to ride in the cars with them, and to go out and do patrol. Uh, that was discontinued uh, about a year and a half ago. And um, my, one of my committees that I serve on is an auxiliary police uh, uh, advisory committee. And we're now working with the province to see if there, there's a way that we can uh, reinstitute that province wide. Because I, I think it, it, it plays an important role. And, and there are people that are willing to, to step out and help. And I think we want to do that. So there's a couple of tough questions. One is, um, you know, you talk about mental health, but I have a few friends who are in the RCMP, and I think they they talk about the strain on the RCMP. A lot of people on on sick leave or mental mental uh, mental health leave. So, so to me, that's just going to in increase the costs, or is going to put more pressure on that the the RCMP to provide services. So just curious, your 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 sense of how how much strain the RCMP members are under. You know, I I think that all police officers are, are under increased pressure recently. Uh, I think it stemmed from the events during the pandemic, and we saw the uh, you know what happened uh, you know in, in the United States with uh, with George Floyd, and and then we got into the sort of the Black Lives Matter, the defund the police, and and I think that put a lot of pressure on on members. Uh, I, I've heard of some disturbing incidents where where members out doing their job have been have been heckled and uh and i and i think that that's been enforced i think there's sort of a lot of pent-up frustration during the pandemic people are looking at where they can you know release and and you know that so we're seeing some of that that backlash i mean the rcp have a really tough job to do because they're trying to keep our patrol our communities but uh, provincially, we're dealing with some, uh, you know, uh, we had, uh, you know, incidents at the border crossings. We've had, uh, you know, things province wide where we've had to have police deployments, not to mention, uh, you know, working through a pandemic, supporting wildfires, uh, supporting atmospheric rivers. So our police have had a really tough job. And, and I think it is taking a, a toll on, on the members. They're, they're human. They're first responders. And uh, they, you know, we have to look after them physically. Physically. We give them, you know, all the tools that they need to do, make sure that they have the right, uh, you know, body armor and things and the radio communications. So we give them the physical, you know, tools to do their job. But we also have to look after them as individuals and make sure that they are not feeling the stress of the job. Uh, because as, as we, if we have officers uh, going down uh, due to uh, illness or uh, mental health, which is an illness, uh, then that puts more pressure on the remaining officers and you get into the cycle. And so what we need to do is we have to make sure that we are uh, bringing in officers as replacements where we need them and, uh, and making sure that they have the support that they need to do the job, which is very important to all of us. Yeah, so, so to me, you know, we know in Surrey they've gone from, our, they're looking at RCMP to a municipal police force and the benefits of that entail, if I was in from Surrey, I would, you know, and I voted for that, I'd be like, well, I have cost control measures. I basically, you know, I have control over what the, my police are doing. Um, I have more direct control. Um, so how, how does that, so we'll just comment about Coquitlam being obviously RCMP based. What, what benefits is it for the city of Coquitlam to have R, an RCMP, RCMP detachment within the city of Coquitlam 
and, and how that is better for the citizens of Coquitlam? Well, I, I think one of the things is that, for, first of all, you're part of a much larger organization. So we have the ability to draw on resources from across Canada if we, if we need them. Should we ever have a major event here in Coquitlam, we have uh, resources nearby uh, from, from, from the RCMP. All the training is done for us, so we don't have to try to find spots at the Justice Institute to train our officers. Um, they come from Regina, so we have national training. Uh, we have protocols in place. We have, um, you know, so basically the training, the infrastructure, it's all there and it's all provided for us by the RCMP. Uh, so, and, you know, it's it, generally what we can do is we just sort of say, hey, this is our budget for this year. This is how many officers we'd like. And then we just submit a, a request to Ottawa and say, OK, the city's growing. We'd like four more officers. They come to us fully trained and, and we're, we're ready to go. So I think that's one of the advantages to the RCMP. If, uh, economies of scale, absolutely. And we're part of a number of integrated teams, whether it's homicide, whether it's the dog squad, uh, whether it's uh, traffic enforcement. Uh, investigative units so we have all of those units in place uh, in some cases we also share with our municipal partners as well so um, you know I, I think there's different modeling uh, models of policing uh, one of the recommendations that's come up in the uh, police act reform uh, panel uh, their their paper that was just released is the possibility to transition from the RCMP as a provincial force to to an actual provincial force like they have in in Ontario and Quebec, and uh, and I think that's going to take some investigative to sort of see are there pros or you know what are the cons to to doing that. But uh, the um, the new the report that's just been released. Uh, is very detailed in a number of areas and very vague in a lot of areas. Some of the things that they're suggesting is more oversight of local policing, whether it's a police board at a municipal force, or are there ways that we can duplicate that and still keep the RCMP? And, and you're right when you mentioned earlier, the RCMP is a, is a little more complicated because you have uh, direction from Ottawa, and at the same time, you need to respond to, to local uh, um, community needs as a contract police department. So they're actually a contractor. And so we have some input. Some would say we would have more if uh, we had a municipal force. Certainly that was, I think, one of the reasons why Surrey went the direction that they did. But in a lot of cases, as politicians, you still have that separation. And that's important for, for Canadian democracy is that we don't have political interference in our police departments. And that's why you have the police board that sort of acts as an inter intermediary. So the police report to their police board, but the funding comes from the, uh, the political arm, which would be your city council. So I think in some respects, there is still that sort of protection from operational and uh, oversight. And I, and I think that's important to maintain that. So I want to thank you for coming in. Uh, but is there anything about policing in in the, in, the, in Coquitlam that you'd like to sort of mention to folks that maybe we haven't asked you? No, and I, I think that what's really important is that, uh, that I think our citizens are very well served by the RCMP. We have uh, no interest in transitioning to another model. But what we do want to make sure is that we have, are able to maintain a full complement of RCMP officers. I think the RCMP does a fantastic job, and I'm very appreciative of the men and women who, uh, who serve our community. And uh, we just need to, need to make sure that we support them. And uh, when you see the officers out on the street, thank them for the work that they are doing because they, they're working under some really tough uh, circumstances right now. And, uh, and I think uh, we need to be appreciative of the work that they do. Well, I want to thank you for coming into the studios. There's obviously lots to talk about. We just focused the whole time on the policing. So, of course, uh, you know, any councillor, including yourself, is always welcome to come in and give us uh, more updates. Um, again, thank you for coming in, councillor. Uh, this is Patrick McCarthy reporting with Tri-Cities Community Television. You can see that policing is obviously a big issue in our region, whether you're talking about the policing in Surrey or you're talking policing in the Tri-Cities. Uh, there, there are different models, and there's a lot of things that maybe you don't know about. Hopefully this, this little chat here brought some light there. Again, uh, thank you for watching uh, Tri-Cities Community Television. So thanks, Greg. Good.